I've solved 300 LeetCode questions, competed on the national level, got a big tech software engineering job, and even partnered with LeetCode on my social media. But despite all that, I still feel like I wasted my time. Here's everything I did so you can learn from me and do even better. In this video, I'm going to talk about what my motivation was, how I learned everything, what tools I used, was it even worth it, and if I had to relearn everything again from scratch, what I would do. Right away, why did I do it? I'm not going to lie to you. It's not because I found it fun. I would be slamming my desk in frustration, pulling my hair out in frustration and then it would be like a slap across the face when the question difficulty would say easy. And I don't care what anybody says. Every single person that started out leak coding was exactly like this, struggling with easy questions at first. So if it was so difficult and frustrating, what was the point? Simply put, it's because software engineering interviews are harder than the job itself. Like you go from solving these incredibly complex hard leak code questions just to get a job where you make a button slightly rounder. Or if you get a complex backend job like I have, you're never even gonna use one of these data structures and algorithms ever again. So simply put, I am not ashamed to admit that my sole motivation was the money and prestige that I would get with a big tech software engineering job. Like if you look at the salary differences from like my salary jumped up from $30 an hour to close to $70 an hour total compensation after I got my big tech job at Amazon as a software engineering intern. And the entire interview process was based off of lead code questions. There was maybe 30 minutes where I had to talk about myself. Okay, but how in the world do you actually solve these lead code questions? First, I'm going to be real with you. If you are not crazy good with your data structures and algorithms, you have zero chance of landing a big tech software engineering job. So how did I learn everything so you could copy me? I started on the number one free resource out there, YouTube. Abdul Bari is the undisputed goat for data structures and algorithms. He teaches these complex subjects that used to take me months to understand in one or two YouTube videos to the point where it gets you questioning, are your expensive ass university classes even worth it when you could just learn? learn everything on YouTube through this guy. And on top of that, a lesser known legend is Michael Sample. He'll recap all of these data structures and algorithms that you need to know in literally two minutes. It makes no sense how he does it. I would binge watch these guys videos and it ended up getting me an A in both of my data structures and algorithms classes. While you go through the process of learning these data structures and algorithms, let me put you on to my favorite free tool that I absolutely love sharing. It's a game changer. So it's this website called visualalgo.net and they have visualizations for literally every single thing you need to learn. Let's say, for example, you're on the bane of every CS major's existence, linked lists. You could go through and visually learn how everything works from creating, inserting, searching, and deleting nodes in linked lists. And it shows you all the code associated with those processes right beside going through it line by line. Like whoever made this tool is just a lifesaver and I cannot recommend it more. Okay, now that you have the basics down for your data structures and algorithms, we need to get down to the actual solving of LeetCode questions. So, what questions did I do? How did I solve them? Why did I pick them? First, let me get one of the easiest mistakes out of the way that I did when I was a beginner. Do not just go to lead code and solve every single question you see on there or picking random questions. This is gonna hurt your learning so much it's gonna leave you feeling so frustrated and lost. And that's because there's actually an order you have to follow to learn everything. For example, there's no point in learning how a dynamic programming works before you even know how to work with arrays or lists. So what I did is go to this website called called Neatcode. The first thing you'll see is this roadmap, which takes you through everything you need to learn step by step. Now you have two options you can follow. They're Blind75 or they're Neatcode 150. Honestly, I would start with the Blind75 to get all your fundamentals down. These 75 questions are the most frequently asked questions in big tech interviews. And in fact, I actually had one of those 75 questions in my Amazon interview. So in order, go through those questions, solving one question every single day. If you get stuck, start by starring that question, go and watch the video solution they have because it breaks down how to attempt to solve the problem, a brute force approach, and then the algorithm you're supposed to use to optimize your time complexity solution. And let me tell you, get it out of your head that watching these videos is not cheating. Copying these answers over is not cheating yourself out of anything. As long as you understand what's going on and the fundamentals and you're able to reproduce that a week later, which is why you should be starting the questions by the way. There is nothing wrong with watching these video solutions. Don't let your ego or pride get in the way because I know I used to do that. I used to waste hours and hours being so stubborn thinking I'm so close to getting this when in reality I had no chance and watching that video would have saved me so much time. To actually solve the question, the only coding language you should be using in my 
opinion, is not JavaScript, it's not C, it's not Java, it's Python. And this is because Python is as close to English as you could possibly get. So it removes any little barrier you can have in what's already an incredibly complex and difficult thing to do in lead coding. Now, when you first open up a problem, start by classifying the problem. That includes what data structure it could be or what algorithm you could use to solve it. And then go through and write out something called the pseudocode. This is like the step-by-step -step solution or the workflow your code should follow in English. And side note, as you get used to doing this, in your actual interviews, you're going to be asked to talk out loud and having the pseudocode approach nailed down will help an interviewer get into your own head. So even if you get the question wrong in the interview, they know that you're on the right process and they could either help you out or just be like, yeah, he knows what he's doing. It's okay. Now, when you're done solving this question, you're going to use this hidden strategy that I use. That's kind of a cheat code when it comes to these interviews. And it's as simple as jotting down notes for every single question you solve. This includes what you might've found useful, what you struggled with, what algorithms you use, and then you color code them based off of difficulty. So then a day before an interview, you could read through this cheat sheet. That way, not only does it reinforce your learning because you're writing down your little cheat sheet, but it also jogs your memory. Trust me, it's an absolute game changer and I'll leave my document below so you guys can kind of reference it. Now, if you're confused onto where to even start, do not be overwhelmed. I got this perfect resource for you. One of the single best resources out there for cracking into those big tech companies and the sponsor of today's video is Algo Monster. They're so good because they don't just teach you to memorize, they teach you to master. And this is because they build off of everything that I was mentioning earlier, including that cheat sheet, which is an absolute go-to strategy. And it's something called pattern-based learning. This is the single best way to learn how to go through these LeetCode questions, especially for your big tech interviews, because every single question is actually built off of a subset of eight patterns. So once you go through and master those, you don't actually have to memorize all these individual different solutions, which you might be doing right now. And for each of these patterns, there are set templates that you literally just have to learn once and then reuse in every single one of your solutions for coding questions that use that pattern. It's such a good strategy. Now, what I find super cool and unique is their flow chart approach to solving these LeetCode questions. I don't know about you, but especially when I was first starting out with LeetCode questions, I would look at the question and be like, okay, so now what in the world do I do? And this is where the flow chart is so clutch because it takes you through exactly what you should do based off of what the question is asking you. And then when you actually go and solve the problem, you have an AI assistant to help you. So when you get stuck, you don't waste hours and hours frustrated. You just have an AI teaching you. So if you want to join the over 1 million users that got big tech software engineering jobs because of Algo Monster, I highly recommend you check out the link in the description right now. All right, now that brings me to the biggest question. Was it worth it? To me, the answer is obviously yes. As I said earlier, I was solely motivated financially. I would not have put myself through the absolute hell that is studying LeetCode questions if I did not get compensated for it somehow, even if it's not directly. And in the end, I ended up breaking into Amazon and Autodesk as a software engineering intern. So in the past eight months from just these two internships alone, at the age of 21, I've earned close to 50 grand. But that is not the point. What's more important is it kickstarted my career. It helped me finally break into big tech because something I wish I knew earlier was building out all of these coding projects and all for your resume and for your own learning is incredibly valuable and cool. But those only get you the interviews. It gets you to the door. But LeetCode is what pushes you through that door and finally gets you hired. So if you're at a stage where you're getting interviews, but you just can't get through them, grind your LeetCode. If you aren't even getting interviews in the first place, work on your resume and build projects. So to end off this video, let me tell you what you should do. Do not solve the 300 questions that I did. There is absolutely no need, especially with stuff like Cluely coming out to help you cheat on these interviews and companies like Snapchat saying they're moving away from LeetCode style interviews. LeetCode might be dying soon. In the meantime, just go through the blind 75 on LeetCode, complete Algo Monsters course, learn everything from Abdul Bari, Michael Sample, and Neatcode. I literally owe that guy half my salary. And after you've gone through those 75 questions and made your own document, instead of endlessly cramming more and more questions, whenever you get these interviews, go to this website called Sean Prashai Leco Patterns, pick out the company you got the interview for, and just cram those. It honestly feels like cheating, and who cares? Because LeetCode should honestly be nowhere part of the software engineering interview process in my opinion. If you found any of this helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and good luck on your own LeetCode journey. It will be brutal, but it is worth it. I'll see you in the next one.